Okay, we are back live at VMworld 2012. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE.com. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE.tv's flagship telecast. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. CEOs, entrepreneurs, analysts, marketing people, developers, whoever has the signal, we want to extract that, share that with you. And uh, we have a special guest today, uh, Frank Salutman, who's the CEO of ServiceNow. Uh, again, I'm John Furrier, and I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante, wikibon.org. Frank, last time we saw you, you were up on the stage, you had these uh, glasses on, a hat. You know, <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Elwood. So, uh, <laughs> welcome to theCUBE, first time on. Uh, Thank you. Been to many VM worlds, I'm sure. A little, yep. little different angle now. Yeah. ServiceNow, very exciting. Just went public, solving a big problem, and uh, at it again. Yes, absolutely. So, uh, tell us, how do you feel? That's uh, interesting. A lot of people uh, ask me, how did you end up in, uh, you know, in, a, in, a, in an application software you know, type of category? You spend all this time in, uh, in storage. Uh, the reality is I spent most of my life uh, you know, being in application development and testing and system management. So this is actually close to my wheelhouse. Storage was actually a pretty good diversion for me, career-wise. So, so. so ServiceNow, you know, relatively, you know, not, not a household name, but uh, solving that, that problem or Really, there's no system of record for IT, what IT activities are doing, uh, whether it's finance, whether it's application portfolio, project portfolio, you guys are sort of attacking that whole nut with a software as a service model. I mean, I mean, uh, there used to be a lot of point tools to do that, and um, you guys seem to be having a lot of success bringing that all to the cloud. Yeah, the, the, the irony is, is that you look at all the corporate functions, you know, finance, sales, marketing, HR, uh, IT sort of ranks, you know, last or near last in terms of management sophistication, right, compared to the other functional areas, because the most uh, IT organizations have to show for themselves is a, is a help desk management system for their workflow, right, and how they, how they keep track of what's running uh, in their, their operation. And that service model is typical of infrastructure providers, right? You see it, you know, with, with, with telcos like, like AT&T, you see it with power utilities like PG&E, they're, they're infrastructure providers first, and uh, the service model is, is not particularly compelling, right? So what we've tried to do is really, you know, take IT from a DMV style service model, stand in the line waiting to be helped, to one that's more like Amazon.com, where I help myself, it's intuitive, it's online, it's productive, it's where I want to go to, uh, to make requests as well as receive service. You know. So you're selling primarily to the IT organization. Who do you sell to in the IT organization? Is it the CIO, is it the project management office, is it all of the above? Yeah, so service management is a very well uh, defined center of responsibility in IT organizations. So there, there's always a group of people who is in charge of that, uh, that discipline. They're easy to find, but CIOs are always involved. And the, the reason is, these are very high profile system rollouts because everybody in IT is an actor or a participant in the workflow as well as the broader employee population, the enterprise touch these systems. So you better believe that people are, are, are sensitive uh, about this being a successful project rollout. It looks more like an ERP system than it does an infrastructure type system. Yeah, right? without uh, the ERP complexity of installation. Yes, it's, it's a mixed metaphor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, be careful with that one. But so, no, so you're, you're roughly a $150 million company, you know, annualize it, you Nice market. I think we've, we've guided to about 235. 235. Just this, this year. Yeah, okay, you know. great. That's. Uh, that's Want to make okay. sure that our investors don't get confused yeah, I'm, by I'm our comments. Yeah, I'm looking there. Sorry about that. Yeah. So 235, which is why your market cap's about 3.6 billion, I think. If we, I we had about 98 percent growth in billings in, our, in the last quarter. So the high growth, obviously, is what drives. What's driving yeah. that? So how big is the business that you guys play in? What's your TAM? So we we think that the. The TAM, just for the narrow definition around IT service management, is a, is a multi-billion dollar opportunity. Um, because of the, the nature of, of these IT workflows, we're also expanding into the IT operations management area, right? And this, is, this is where HP lives and BMC and IBM and CA with these very large, uh, you know, open view, Tivoli, system Unicenter. System management, network yes. management. Yes, right. uh, because the workflows between service and system management are all becoming integrated. They used to be separate spheres. Not anymore. And right? that's an enormous market. I mean, it, yeah, IDC thinks it's about a 13, 14 billion dollar market, and then you have the platform as a service opportunity because our customers have just gone wild building all kinds of bespoke applications uh, on our platform just because they could. So you're kind of betting on the intersection of systems management and I, I, IT operations management. And the platform. Yeah, okay, and, the, yeah. and it's kind of jump ball, really, with the dynamic of the cloud coming in, isn't it? In terms of the comp competitive scenario. It's, uh, it, it's interesting because we look in other SaaS uh, categories like HR or marketing, you see a whole host of players. You look in, in our category, uh, the only breakout play 
there has been service now um, and we are predominantly compete against legacy uh, vendors and the people that I just mentioned so you've got some experience doing that Frank <laughs> I want to I want to ask you about um, obviously the discipline side of the market you guys are a public company so yeah you're out there is all exposed um, and then talk about some of the product directions because uh, out yesterday they were really showcasing the vision within VMware old way new way access, apps, infrastructure, you know, the classic, you know, old way, new way, modern era, we've been calling it. Um, in your world, you're actually replacing some pretty old yeah. stuff. I mean, I remember back in the late 80s, early 90s, help desks, people with headsets, headsets on, and, you know, homegrown software, developers would quit. So a lot of have this legacy kind of mindset. Um, so first question is, is that true? Is there still that much baggage in, in that services business from an infrastructure standpoint? And the second part of the question is, what's the new stuff that's really disrupting the market? So in the new way, what is the key features that are, that's happening in the services industry? So, you know, I, I already started to allude to it, right? So you, you want to evolve that service model from that help desk centric, you know, DMP style of service experience to one that's online looks more consumer style, you know, the w way we've learned from Apple and Yahoo and Google and, and people like that. Help yourself, right? If you have a problem at home with your Apple TV, are you really going to try and call Apple? No, you're going to go online and you find user communities. You get to your answers 10 times faster that way than, than following these, uh, the, the old models the way you, you reference. There is an awful lot of that still uh, living in the world of IT because their focus is infrastructure, not service. That's changing, right? I mean, CIOs, uh, I, you know, I, I read somewhere have a, a shelf life of about 18 months, right? There's incredible impatience and dissatisfaction with how that function is running. It's costing too much money and the service is not exactly to, to write home about. So people are really ready to move their service models along. Well, the along. first answer was just hire someone else to do it. That was the outsourcing yeah. boom, right? So that still brought problems, right? Legacy. Yeah. So how, is that still in play? So if the notion is okay, outsource it, and then the outsourcers has some warts on it. That's got to be tweaked. What's the new version? Because, you know, Amazon.com and, you know, this, these new environments with well, mobility, instant access to information, self-service, et cetera, is that changing it? We, we believe that the move to, to cloud computing is really going to change the role of the CIO, right? Because infrastructure is going to become something that's behind the curtain, and it's becoming less of an infrastructure-centric job. The CIOs and IT organizations become more service engineering organizations, people that understand workflows, people that understand how to automate workflows rather than, you know, I know how to run a database or a network or, you know, all the security dimensions and, and, and so on because we're, we're just breaking as an industry. There just isn't enough competency and skill sets for everybody to be competent at the level that we need to be at, at IT infrastructure. It's not scaling, right? It's sort of the way... Uh, uh, telephone switching centers were in the 1950s, yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, it's so one of those things, too, where the CIO tends to say, I'll get to that later. It's, but now with big data and real-time analytics, there's more pressure on the service delivery side as a business driver. Are you seeing that pressure as well, or is it more of, we just got to fix it now, I got to do it? Well, you know, IT organizations tend to live from one crisis to the next. They're completely event-driven. You know, we have an outage, we're all over it, trying to restore service, and, you know, we sort of live that life day in and day out. But it never changes. Right, so uh, we can get ahead of this game, you know, if we start structuring, you know, the interaction model that we have with our users, how we communicate with them. I mean, simple things, right? When you, when you have an outage, it would be helpful if we were able to post status, you know, every 20 minutes as to what, what we're doing, what's going on, right? But having the infrastructure be able to push data out, you know, like that, most organizations don't, don't do that. They live pretty much in the dark. Yeah? Okay, so share with our audience out there that's watching. We have a lot of IT professionals and data scientists and analyst type audiences we, that, we, that follow SiliconANGLE Wikibon, um, and some CIOs as well, um, and some early adopters. Share with the folks out there the pitch. How bad is it that their environment, and how easy is it to change it is? Give them just an, an order of magnitude sense of, is it turnkey? How do you guys roll in? What's the engagements look like? It's not as hard as it thinks. You know, most people might have the have the opinion, ah, oh, it's I don't want to get it's just ugly, oh, it's painful. Yeah. Or is it not painful? Is it quick pop now? Is it like how fast to roll in and out the infrastructure that you guys are delivering? Well, these are extraordinarily sticky systems. The system that we that we replace your systems or the old systems? The old systems are. Um, and the reason is they've been around for ten 15 years, they're very difficult to replace. And if you look at our growth, it's certainly testament to how compelling the value proposition has been that people have said, you know, A, the pain is becoming unbearable, and B, the view of the promised land is looking pretty good, right? So there's both an incentive to change and to move, 
And secondly, there is something to move towards that is, that is compelling and inspiring and really is going to change my game, right? Because you know, we tell people, so look, if you're just trying to uh, get to a snazzier, more modern help desk, we're not your guy, okay? Because we don't find it a compelling vision of the world. We want to wholesale transform how you deliver service. You know, just take us through some of those stats. We were talking before you came on about your growth, tripling in size, but talk about some, uh, as, a, as a company, which is, Whole nother conversation we can talk about. <laughs> Yet you have expertise in, but talk, talk more about the customer deployments. You got some fresh funding with the with the with the IPO. You, you're geared up. You go out to the marketplace. What are the conversations like? What are some of the stats? And and what are the conversations like with the CIO? Well, the, the CIOs obviously are, are interested first and foremost at the, the the transformation of the service model. Right. I mean, it, we have to get to uh, to a service experience that's more reminiscent of what people experience on the consumer side. Now, we typically have to do that at an economic uh, equation that's very similar to what they're having right now. They're not interested in spending more. They just want to get a completely refreshed you know, platform for similar amounts of money that they're already spending. You know, because we're SaaS, you know, we're, we're not just taking the software not off the, off, the, uh, off the table. We're also taking the entire infrastructure, all the operating staff, everything that it takes to run that environment that becomes ours, right? It's no longer in the IT department. So that looks pretty compelling to them. How about some of the numbers in terms of uptake with customers um, recently? What's the growth rate? What's the, can you share some numbers? We, uh, we have about 1,200 enterprise customers. We added about 127 uh, the last quarter. Um, that's, you know, that, that is a huge number of customers to, uh, to add. We have, most of our focus is on global 2,000 enterprises. We have about 230 global 2,000 enterprises and they're all, you know, who's who, names that, that, uh, that people recognize. So the uptake has been uh, been strong. We're running very, very hard to make sure that we have the services infrastructure, both there's people and infrastructure to be able to accommodate that. Uh, well, I'm excited to interview you because I want to ask you kind of more of a personal question. Um, and uh, I mean, although we just met for the first time here, your name's been kicked around as kind of a maverick operational uh, executive uh, who knows how to scale organizations. So we're kind of living in an era where it, the business value focus, whether it's startups, and there's been a lot of talk about you know the Facebook IPO, the young kids under 30 running billion dollar market cap companies are trying to actually move from hype to, to real scale. And Paul Moritz made a comment yesterday kind of uh, dissing Facebook in terms of the value proposition relative to say you know VMware. But the question I want to ask you is, um, What's your success model for scaling an organization? Um, and, and for the younger executives out there, and for people who don't know you, uh, just share us on, on, on the camera. What's your philosophy? As the, the as the repeatable sales, lower cost, leverage model. I mean, there's a variety of different kind yeah. of ingredients. What's the Frank Slootman formula for success in, in scaling, bringing a product to market, and growing it? Well, the, the the first order of business, you know, for for a startup venture of any sort, is growth. Um, I find that you know a lot of people come out of business school and they're trying to balance growth with profitability. Um, that mentality makes no sense to me, right? It's economics before accounting. Accounting becomes the bastardization of economics. We run you know our ventures on cash, on bookings. These are economic concepts, not accounting constructs, right? And people are trying to show profit prematurely when they can invest that money to grow. I mean, we tripled uh, our headcount over the last year. We got very far uh, over our skis. You know, we're burning a hole in our cash piles, but we're very clear with investors says, look, we are still increasing our productivity per head. Why wouldn't we apply the resources to grow this franchise? Growth expands our multiples, expands valuation. That's what everybody is in the business for. So, so to sort of summarize you know, on, on, on your question, most people hold back on growth and they don't really know why. They're not all out trying to drive growth. And the reason that growth is, 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 is so important, you need to be a breakout player. Nobody wants to be the in-between player that's neither fish nor fowl and doesn't become a dominant entity in the space that it wants to be in. And have the financing and the, and the, the dry powder behind you. That, and you were a venture capitalist at Greylock, which knows a thing or two about uh, investing. So but that's also an important part, right? Well, you, that, that's why I said you manage on cash and you manage on bookings value. Those are the economics of the business, yeah. essentially. So. And you've been lucky enough to have some really good financiers behind you, trust you, who get the concept, and that's key, right? Well, <laughs> Making sure you have the right when, partners. When we went public, we also explained to investors, look, this is what we're trying to do, and this is what we need you to buy into, otherwise buy somebody else's stock. You know? so how, do, how does uh, the going public affect the, you know, the perception amongst the CIOs? I mean, you chose to list on the NYSE. We had them on earlier this week, but uh, how has that affected the, the, the brand perception? Yeah, that, that was the whole reason for us to, to go public, right? We didn't need the cash. Uh, liquidity obviously is good for employees and investors, but an IPO is fundamentally a branding event. You know, I, I use the analogy, we went from playing on Saturday to playing on Sunday. 
You know, all of, <laughs> you, all of a sudden, you know, you're transparent. Um, you know, all the, all the FUD that gets spread, you know, about you by competition. People can now punch you up on Yahoo and, and see what the truth is around your balance sheet. You know, how, how good your last quarter was. It's been, uh, the IPO was tremendous for us from a branding standpoint. Yeah, and you've been yeah. known to um, have a reputation of really getting the product, or the, in this case, the service right, and then really getting aggressive on the sales side. Can you talk about what you've done on the sales side? I know you've aggressively hired and... Yeah, we, um, you know, as, as I said, we tripled our headcount. We went from three sales regions to 12 uh, inside one year. We spread out all over Europe. And at the end of the day, this is a ground war. You need an army to fight it. This is not Facebook. We cannot sign up a million people in a week. Uh, it, is, it, is, it is a business that runs over the ground. So you cannot scale and drive growth of a business unless you have the people to run it. And you're selling belly to belly, is that right? Or Absolutely. You, so you're not we're, going we're, we're going through the front door, up the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're getting the hook here. We're getting the hook, but I have uh, two Go quick ahead. final questions. Uh, one is just put a plug out there for servicesangle.com. That's Silicon Angle's separate publication we launched last year. Uh, thanks to EMC for helping us sponsor that, but really dedicating to the new era of services. And there is some disruption. Uh, we're excited to cover you guys, so I just wanted to say go, go check out Services Angle. Um, so Frank, I want to ask you two questions. One, what's the big disruption in the services business that most people aren't getting right now? The general you know, man in tech on the street, not the insider uh, inside the ropes. So that's the first question. The second question, what's your goals for the year for the business? Well, um, the interesting thing about the services business is how it's one of these areas that is sort of the least automated, right? It, it runs on the, on the concept of institutional knowledge, uh, phone conversations, informal uh, communications, email, and uh, the, the frontier in, in service management is that w those become software automated structured processes. That is not just happening in IT. Table sticks. It's happening everywhere, right? Whether you want to request food, you know, for, from, a, from a hotel. I mean, you, you can go to Virgin America, right? And you, you, you now request from your seat, you know, something. I and mean, that, that's just, you know, an, an example of how. That's the service, trend. There's yeah, no debate about that. that that's how it's going to go, right? So services uh, is going to become really, the, I, I call it the service fabric, right? It's essentially how uh, these processes get conducted. So uh, we're super excited because our, our platform sits right in the middle of that, that trend, and we're going to try and make that trend yeah, It's uh, a leverage happen. platform, too. Yeah. The economics are fantastic. There's no real customization to your product. Exactly. So good margins exactly. will be. <laughs> and it's, it's so much. Buy the it's, stock it's, immediately. Uh, it's much more scalable, and it, disremedi it disintermediates you know, all, the, all the manual effort that goes into these Okay, processes. so now I know you're a public CEO and everything now, so you really can't be as wild as you could if you were private, but what's the outlook for your, your personal goals for the year? Well, we, we, we've given guidance to the market one quarter out in <laughs> four years, so check with your favorite analyst. So. <laughs> okay. okay, growth is uh, on the horizon. Congratulations, Frank Sullivan. Great to have your uh, leadership in theCUBE. Thank First you. First time Cuban, great to have you. This is uh, SiliconAngle.com, theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest, uh, Cynthia Stoddard from NetApp, CIO, another CIO. We're going to get into the trenches and hear about the IT transformation again, so we'll be right back.